Taylor Twelman here on the show. How are you, Taylor? Good, Rich. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, we're just talking about how uh, I am just so locked into this World Cup and trying to put my finger on as to why, and I, I, I just understand how, the bigness of it and what it means to so many people and nations and even when you see the video of Panama getting its figurative <laughs> brains beaten in and they finally score a goal, and it, it you've seen the viral video, Taylor, going all over the place. Yeah, Rich, it's so hard for the American sports fan to fully understand, I think, what goes into everything because, you know, yearly you were talking about the NFL playoffs, the NBA playoffs, and, and the match, March Madness and the majors in golf. This comes every four years. And every single country starts that process. The moment Russia is over, Rich, 2022 starts for so many countries. So Panama gets their brains beat in, and yet they score their first World Cup goal ever in their nation, and that's why you see that celebration. It's kind of it's really hard to make a comparison because I just don't think there is. Well, in terms of getting started for the next World Cup, I also mentioned it was difficult to watch Panama get no whipped like that, especially since that could have easily been the United States spot. Is the United States that comparatively worse to Panama that, that they couldn't make it and we watched what Panama is doing with its opportunity? No, Taylor? but Rich, you, your, your feeling in your gut watching that was the exact same feeling for me and I think for so many of us. I mean, I remind everyone, the United States absolutely destroyed Panama right before the debacle in Trinidad 4-0. They went to Panama and got a result. So it wasn't direct Panama versus the United States. But the reality is is that the United States could not get a result against a second team at Trinidad. And that ultimately turns into the reason why you and I are watching 6-1 England over Panama and want to throw up because the reality is Panama qualified and the United States didn't. Hmm. So uh... – Let's discuss then, uh, I imagine, what the United States needs to do to get back on this stage, Taylor. Let's let's get into that, since obviously that is kind of front and center with Panama's result against England. Rich, it's an interesting question, and, and quite honestly, it's a three- to four-hour discussion type of thing because it's not a black-and-white answer. But what I mean by that is that so many things in our country with the sport of soccer, and I'm not. this isn't about basketball, baseball, football, and hockey even to a certain extent – but soccer is played, developed, and quite honestly, um, commercialized completely different around the world. And I use this analogy. The United States is trying to play checkers while the rest of the world's playing chess, whether it's promotion relegation, whether it's pay to play, whether it's coaching education. You can have a legit, and I'm not saying we have to do it the, the way the rest of the world does it either. And I'm also not saying if you have an accent, you know more than the American but, Rich, if this isn't a wake-up call for the rest of the country and, quite honestly, any of the power brokers that are in this country with the sport of soccer, then, then, then I'm going to say you're insane because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Now, I hope this is a wake-up call for all of those money-making, power-broking people. But, Rich, let me – kind of go a little deeper into what I mean by an example of coaching development. Iceland is the size of Corpus Christi, Texas, and it's about 330,000 plus population. If I was, if Rich Eisen wants to become the highest developed and educated coach in that country, it is roughly going to cost you $2,000. In the United States of America, Rich Eisen, who has no history with soccer, wants to become an A-level pro coach with the amount of travel and the amount of everything you put in, Rich, it's, it's over five figures, way more. You're looking at 25 to 40 grand, depending on where you're in the country. Hmm. So, so my argument right there is if you, want to make a, if you want to put a dent into the deficiency of what we're doing in our country, any single human being that is coaching the sport of soccer in our country, you need to be educated and licensed by proper professionals and make it accessible, make it affordable. Whether you're coaching at a parish, whether you're coaching at a local team, whether you're coaching at a travel team, I don't care what it is. But if, if Iceland can figure it out on such a micro level, the United States can. It's just whether or not they're willing to fully roll up their sleeves and get into that kind of conversation. 
And I'm not totally sure that is there yet. Now, obviously, the United States has a new president, so we're going to wait and see. But I think, Rich, the better answer to your question is call me in 10 years, and we'll see if it really was a eye-opening uh, moment for the United States. Well, in terms of uh, Taylor Twelman of ESPN joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, so but in terms of the, I, the comparison that you've just made, uh, a young man or woman – Yep. Uh, in Iceland can grow up and just look obviously at what Team Iceland has been able to do so far and say, I want to be part of that. Uh, a young man or woman in this country can see the NCAA tournament, football yep. and basket. I mean, there's so many other ways for somebody to imagine their dream and also uh, exact uh, their riches. And so I guess my follow-up question to this is why have the women's side seem to have gotten this straight, and the men can't? Uh, great question, Rich, and it's one that many people ask in, in, in the sports world uh, because it's a, honest-to-God, simple question. The rest of the world has not developed women the way the, the, the women have in this country. However, you ask me in five, ten years from now, the French, the, the European women player, that's completely different. They're, they right now, the Colombian. The South American women national team player and the European national team player in women's soccer is exponentially growing because they finally are putting resources into that. And then that begs the question, is the United States women national team still so reliant on the athleticism and not the technique and, and uh, for lack of a better word, the, te the technical part of it and the tactical part of it, I think the United States women are going to be really challenged, if not next year, a World Cup four year, you know, five years from today. And the reason why is because the United States women, with Title IX and whatnot, they've been afforded the opportunity to play the sports for, um, much sooner than the rest of the world has. That's quite simply what it is. But when you now talk to, and I was in Paris doing the U.S.-France friendly a couple weeks ago before the World Cup started, and the French women are all over the billboards now, and now all of a sudden they, they, those schools are being open for the French women, I'm telling you, watch out. And that goes back to my initial point about that male or female coaching the game. I'm not sure our coaches and our developing players at the same rate the rest of the world is. And, Rich, another food for thought. When you turn 16, 17 around the world, you're a professional. When you turn 16, 17 in our country, you're going to college. And in soccer, you're playing two and a half, three months, that's it. So a, a scout told me on the male side, five years from now, expect to see 50 to 60 Christian Pulisics in Europe because the 14 to 15-year-old good soccer player, they're all over this country. It's the problem is 16 to 19, or I would say 16 to 21, the rest of the world grows and we stop or stagnate because hmm. we think we've got a college scholarship, now it's over, where the rest of the world is actually training with professionals and still getting their education. People think when I bring that up, they're like, no, 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 it means we don't want education. That's not true. If you read Das Reboot uh, about the German national team, Rich, task 1A on developing players was educated. It makes perfect sense. Why would you want stupid players? Mm-hmm. So the they wanted their players to be educated and training at a higher level. We've got to figure out that age 16 to 21. Otherwise, you and I are going to have this conversation, I think, every 12 to 16 years. By the way, I love that name, Das Reboot. Um, great. It, that's my that's nickname great. in the morning when I'm uh, after <laughs> Scott Van Pelt show. Last one for you, Taylor, in about a, a minute's time, if you can. Uh, this looks like it's a wide-open tournament right now. Wh who do you like? Who are you seeing that might even be just a cut above the rest here? It's a good question, Rich. I mean, the World Cup's been very, you know, we've had some, some surprises. I do think from the beginning, I have felt it's got Spain-Brazil final all written all over it. I don't like to be someone that backtracks. I'm going to stay with Spain. I, I look at this team, and even though they tied 3-3 against Ronaldo in Portugal, two of those three goals were self-inflicted and stupid. And this is a team that can pass the ball to death. They can play it to death. They can get shutouts. How many teams in this World Cup can get shutouts? Very few. Spain's one of them. I still think Spain is there. Now, two teams that could dethrone them, the French – are more talented than any team at the World Cup. However, we all know they got to be in the right mood at the right time. Can they do that for six straight games? 
And I still think if Neymar gets out of his own way and just plays the game, Brazil's got the most complete roster. Taylor, great chat. Let's chat soon. Thanks again. Sounds good, buddy. You bet. That's uh, ESPN's Taylor Twelman here on The Rich Eisen Show. You can follow him at Taylor Twelman. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.